Namaste and welcome to our continuing series, Explorations in Savitri, with our beloved Alok. We are in the book of the Divine Mother still, Canto 3, The House of the Spirit and the New Creation, page 327, beginning about ten lines down. There, mind, a splendid sun of vision's rays, shaped substance by the glory of its thoughts, and moved amidst the grandeur of its dreams. Imagination's great ensorcelling rod summoned the unknown and gave to it a home, outspread luxuriantly in golden air, truth's iris-colored wings of fantasy, or sang to the intuitive heart of joy wonder's dream notes that bring the real close. Its power that makes the unknowable near and true. In the temple of the ideal shrined the one. It peopled thought and mind and happy sense, filled with bright aspects of the might of God and living persons of the One Supreme. The speech that voices the ineffable, the ray revealing unseen presences, the virgin <clears throat> forms through which the formless shines, the word that ushers divine experience, and the idea that crowd, sorry, and the ideas that crowd the infinite. There was no gulf between the thought and fact. Ever they replied like bird to calling bird. The will obeyed the thought, the act, the will. So we see here not only a marvelous uh, description, if you may use the word, of supramental world yes. with the supramental beings of native to that world. Yes. Unlike what has to be done here, we also experience the difficulty and the big gulf between this world and the world out there. And that shows the measure of the difficulty. I mean, it's not as simple as, okay, now we have read and... <laughs> Uh, people often discuss, debate, but look at the challenge from the very beginning he starts. Uh, before we touch this first line, actually we see that in Shobindo's uh, hierarchy of worlds, when he describes the order of the worlds, so the lower three worlds come from the higher worlds. That's how it is. They are a shadow. That's why they can be transformed. So matter comes from pure existence. So the peace of pure existence, its stability, it's the last bedrock, changes into inertia. Then life comes from consciousness force, chittapas. And mind comes from supermind. And the soul itself is a drop in this net of time and space, but coming from bliss. So that is why soul by its nature, you know, loves the divine, seeks for bliss and beatitude. It, it is instinctively inbuilt within it. So he describes that in great detail in the life divine. So mind regains its fullness in the supramental. So that's what he speaks of, you know, King Dumatsena regaining his sight is essentially the divine mind fallen here blind, once again regaining its sight. And the consequences of that fullness of light he is describing to us. So He regains it only through Savitri. Yes, it, it has to come by grace and it has to go through that passage where Satyavan must die. <laughs> yes, <laughs> That yes. is the bigger part, difficult part. Their mind is splendid sun of vision's rays. So the mind regains its fullness. No more the rays but the sun itself. <clears throat> Shaped substance by the glory of its thoughts. So what it thought the substance automatically obeyed. Now, this is one of the biggest challenge. In fact, the biggest challenge. Here, matter does not obey the thought. Leave aside the spiritual force and the supramental. 
the moment the super mind tries to put little pressure over it it breaks because its mold is not of that make and that's why the mother says all imperfection that we find on earth is ultimately if you go back into its roots it's because of the imperfection of matter a very beautiful um, small write up of the mother in volume 2 very early words of long ago she says all imperfection is ultimately the imperfection of matter we may blame people or whatever but ultimately the material mold is such that the forces of the divine which enter into it cannot act freely not because they cannot act freely in an absolute sense they can but matter will break down so it has to be slowly prepared it has to be made plastic to the spirit stars that explains many things for example when there is a physical illness and we call why doesn't it heal automatically so some people ignorantly draw a conclusion that well if mother's force is there it's powerful omnipotent why am i not getting well it's not about you but if the pressure is put off that absolute force body will just vanish break us and this happened with uh, even the classical example of is of that uh, you know gangadharan ji recounts uh, i think he was his previous master swami ramalingam heard anybody you heard his story he used to talk about gray light and his body undergoing changes and you know how the bone is he talks about transformation and there is a passage in the agenda where mother was asked about it that he talks about gray light is an isolated phenomena this is just round the corner ben shurbindu is coming and he also foresaw in a way um, in a certain sense the coming of shurbindu somebody who will complete but look what happened he was trying 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 then a point came when he told his disciples now i am no more going to guide you uh, regarding your guidance someone else will come mm-hmm. and he shut the doors and said that you know don't uh, open the door Uh, when you open the door after some time i would be gone so it two months passed and the you know government agencies and everybody like you know they were all getting restless and they opened the door and he was gone this is one of the authentic things people have actually witnessed he was gone so the whole thing vanished because beyond a point the body cannot contain now that's not what sure bindu wants <laughs> so he wants transformed beings here but here the mind is shaping <coughs> substance by yes, the glory, glory of, of its thoughts. thoughts here we think but it turns out to be most of the time wishful thinking even if you recover thought in its fullness still the body doesn't respond that's why we have to work at both the ends people don't understand the great importance of physical education in the ashram you can't if you are a lazy bone forget about transformation you may have all the knowledge in the all here but substance is not responding and moved amidst the grandeur of its dreams imagination's great and sorcelling rod summoned the unknown and gave to it a home so here we again draw a differentiation between imagination and reality and people often joke that you know the tree of realization sometimes you know it looks like the imagination tree so one person was saying i don't know whether it's an imagination or a realization that i am having but in truth there is something called as truth imagination now what is truth imagination it gives forms to true forms to things which have not yet got a body just as we create forms by imagination mm-hmm. what is imagination but a fragment of the power of maya with which the divine builds form same thing so we can say that all creation is an imagination of the divine but because it's an imagination of the divine there is a truth creation then it goes down and down there are many mediators and who keep distorting adding their little brick here and their little plan there and the whole thing becomes on this world but the first forms and the first creations in the world are truth creations then they come down and material world is completely different so th- that's the power of imagination itself becomes truth imagination there so he is using it in such a ensorcelling rod outspread luxuriantly in a golden air truths iris colored wings of fantasy or sang to the intuitive heart of joy wonders dream notes that bring the real close 
So there, I mean, all is beauty and bliss and every form is many shaped tones and hues and colors and everything. Uh, what here, we, when we have fantasy forms here, it's more and more distorted. Actually, it's very interesting. You must have seen uh, Eric Von Gogh's painting, you know, the famous uh, yes. man who later on turned schizophrenic. So if you actually see his paintings, you will actually see how there is a distortion coming. He in his heydays, and then toward the end, when you this used to be taught to us as a classic example of how a schizophrenic mind works. And uh, I have seen here also one lady's paintings when she was in deeply inspired. And the paintings were so close to something real. But later on, when she underwent a breakdown, psychotic breakdown, then one can see the forms that were there, human forms. The eyes had become like glass, which was very different in her previous paintings. The eyes were like, you felt they are really real, something like a soul depth. So all these, even fantasy, we call it fantasy here and create a distinction between real, unreal, fantasy, dream. But there, those distinctions don't exist because what the spirit conceives, it creates. At that level, if you see, spirit is conceiving out of the freedom. So you can call it, it's imagining. It's fantasizing, yes, of course. But these fantasies are close to the real. It's power that makes the unknowable near and true. So that which is beyond, which is unknowable, it gives to it a certain kind of form and brings it near and true. <clears throat> In the temple of the ideal, shrine the one. It peopled thought and mind and happy sense, filled with, filled with bright aspects of the might of God and living persons of the one supreme. So not only objects, but uh, um, even beings, personalities, they are being created and they are uh, revealing the truth of their being. Uh, Mother speaks of it, passingly in the uh, experience of 3rd February 1958 where she speaks about the great supramental ship where there are beings who are going and how they are uh, you know they are being just she says not by any moral or um, outer things but the psychological condition and the only way was that they would it's like a scanner <laughs> the color <laughs> color <laughs> and she sees her own body and she describes how it it's absolutely white on top, radiant white, and the legs are completely orangish, which is because touch of earth. It's a transformed body, she describes. She doesn't use the word, but it's complete. Whereas in others, there are some shadows cast, there are blotches here and there, and they are being sent back. So that but is Some only, are ready to leave. Yes, some are ready to even go to the other side. Yes. And she says, some were ready. And she describes that... Uh, um, more or less some people she says I was not surprised and some surprises in wait means all our human judgments are meaningless <laughs> who is ready who is not ready who is fit who is unfit so she sees and says uh, some were from ashram some from outside I mean all our measures so this is a different world altogether each person is a living person of the one supreme the speech that voices the ineffable, the ray revealing unseen presences in that light we can see these great beings hidden from our sight, the virgin forms through which the formless shines. So the virgin forms is also the first forms, the first gods. Uh, virgin forms are also those which are not corrupted by the fall. So the lower hemisphere and the touch of division, they are not corrupted by that. So these are the virgin forms which are uh, there in the supramental world. The word that ushers divine experience and the ideas that crowd the infinite. So again, the word that ushers divine experience is the way we can describe Shurabindo's words. <laughs> it is not just something which is intellectual. It can usher the divine experience because it's, a it's vibrating with the supramental touch. Of course, there is nothing like a supramental language on earth. 
mother says the difficulty of expressing it on in upon earth but it is the word that can usher the experience there are people who have this uh, experience reading shurabindu's books that they have the experience of what they are reading i myself in the beginning reading since of yoga used to have this i read a chapter and i have that experience so it is something which can usher it can bring you the experience not an intellectual understanding that comes later i interviewed a fellow from oroville yesterday who was there in the very early years mm -hmm. and he said to me all of us knew we were going to be supermentalized <laughs> he, said, he said it was there we knew it was there and of course it never happened but, but they, that feeling was there when mother was there that everything is possible everything can happen fortunately we didn't see that transition in this life that's right so like some for someone like me that's right the other day someone called me up and said you know how can it be possible you have never seen the mother and shubindo but when you are speaking it looks like constantly they are there i said yes because we have grown up with that we never had that uh, distinction once utadi told us uh, meeting me and some others so she said you know when mother was there so we had to tell her utadi please yeah. for us there is no was there is only is but i can understand the people who saw the transition uh, they had a big difficulty you know suddenly the physical support is withdrawn but some took the leap of faith and knew that now you have to discover her inside and mother had already spoken that the reason why i am withdrawing because before that she withdrew from <coughs> ashram activities from 62 onwards mm. she never came down so she said that that you know i i hope that my children have grown enough progressed enough to be able to contact me within very clearly she says that was the purpose so the whole you know i mean at some point that is required the word that ushers divine experience and the ideas that crowd the infinite so the ideas which were coming it like uh, multiple rays of the sun they are being released into creation and these ideas are crowding the infinite radiance of the supramental consciousness and being now another very interesting thing there was no gulf between the thought and fact that is why the closer we draw towards the intuitive realms uh, the scholarly mind analytical mind that tends to go into the background and then it it becomes just a mediating agency not an agency to discover truth because truth is self evident but this mind can be used just like shurbindo uses in the synthesis and the life divine it's so logical but did he arrive at these things by logic no he it was self evident yes. but if that mind is developed and surrendered it will be used by the greater truth yes. so that's what you know we there was no gulf between the thought and fact ever they replied like bird to calling bird the will obeyed the thought the act the will so that is the another attribute of uh, super super mind that both mother and shubindo at different places describe in life divine at great length that here there is a dissonance between thought and will and every human being who is even little sincere knows it that you know all the good intentions that's why some of the mothers <laughs> writings where she says a notion of a drop of practice is better than a notion of theories resolutions and good advices mm -hmm. because here there is a gulf between knowledge and will knowledge and power but there omniscience is one with omnipotence and omnipotence is one with omniscience what the spirit sees it creates here the mind sees then it says okay now i have to practice it so it tries then it tries to practice then in action it fails it takes a long time because there is a you know they are all at scattered but there it's one there was a harmony woven to its soul and soul a marriage with eternity divinized time so the whole play of time and this is what we have to enter into that uh, right now it's unhappy the march through time because it is not 
our movements, our steps are not in sync with the law of truth. So when they are in sync with it, there is joy and freedom and the great disclosure. Their life pursued, unwearied of her sport, joy in her heart and laughter on her lips. The bright adventure of God's game of chance. What a wonderful line. Life pursued with joy. So this adventure word comes as if there is something unknown. Now, is it possible in supermind that something can be unknown? Shubhinda says that. It can, for the sake of the joy, put behind itself the knowledge. <laughs> How else there will be adventure? Adventure means there is a seeming play of chances, something is unknown. In fact, avatars do it always because otherwise uh, it will be a sham. So they have to put it all knowledge in the background. It can be accessed anytime. That is how Shirobindo says that it's a divine manifestation. So it is there. But it is not brought out freely into the play because otherwise there will be no play, no nothing. You know, human beings will say, you knew everything. <laughs> your, you have no issues. So he weighs. So like that, the same way. And the mother says this in one of her conversations. She says, people, there are those who have the attitude of me as the supreme mother. And there are others who treat me as a guru. So they sometimes wonder when... Sometimes I have to ask or I say I don't know. Even Shurabindo, I remember when reading evening talks at places where Shurabindo says, I don't know. So I wonder how Shurabindo can say, I, I don't know. <laughs> Champaklalji was, you know, when Shurabindo told him, asked him questions, uh, who all are there in that, uh, you know, the village where he's coming from. There was a little ashram. So who all are there and who is... Then at one point, Champaklalji says, you know everything. So Shirobindo, under his breath, says, yes, I know everything. Mm -hmm. But you have to veil it. Because then otherwise, you are not a divine example. I once wrote to Nolini and told him all the things that were happening in New York City. Mm. And he said, Mother was very happy to hear that. She was wondering about what was going on there. <laughs> <laughs> Even this was asked to Sri that then what is the need to check, like the radio, you know, second. He said we have to uh, reconfirm it because at the material plane things change. Yes. So you have to reconfirm whether the things that have been given or transmitted how accurately the world is reproducing it. Yes. Several places, mm -hmm. when Shurabindu is asked, uh, so mother is omniscient, uh, she knows everything. Oh, she says, Lloyd George, Lloyd George including what, with this touch of humor, including what Lloyd George had for his breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> then he says, you are mistaking this knowledge as a knowledge of encyclopedia. Yeah. What you had for breakfast, what you have... Now, this knowledge is an essential knowledge. There is a whole passage in volume 3 where she speaks of knowledge of the scientist and the yogi. So, yogi's knowledge is accurate and perfect. But, for example, a yogi will see a person and say that, well, he is uh, wonderful and sincere and growing. But the outer being may not reflect any of this. So, somebody who sees the outer will say, no, your knowledge is defective. Now, yogi has seen the essence and therefore he is right. But the details of working out, when mother was asked, she said, he can know. But he does not, he may not care to know that. Because he has seen the truth. Ramanujan. Yes, Ramanujan. Had worked yeah, out these special. things that only 60, 70 yeah. years later we are finding out that they were all true. So this is how, you know, a bright adventure of God's game of chance. Sri Aurobindo's humor. Yeah. <laughs> In her ingenious ardor of caprice, in her transfiguring mirth, she mapped on time a fascinating puzzle of events, lured at each turn by new vicissitudes to self-discovery that could never cease. So, you know, it, this is the whole trick. You know, when divine comes in the earthly play, and even in that high realm, because there is a joy of unexpectedness, people don't realize it. People don't know that if everything is known, life would be so boring. 
no adventure probably most people will say what is the point of you know doing anything but the unexpectedness of the play brings its own delight which we won't have otherwise so a famous story in ramayana where rama is tied or you know people speak about christ being crucified so they say that some people say you know it proves they were not divine on the contrary it proves they are divine <laughs> you say deliberate veiling of the whole thing so that they can go through the earthly play how else would christ set such a high standard of compassion how else would rama set such a high standard of nobility and chivalry if you knew i am going to hit an arrow and ravana is going to die people will say this doesn't inspire us <laughs> i want that arrow but now people say i want to be like you otherwise they would want that arrow <laughs> which is shot is it <laughs> so this is how uh, he is describing that world and it's a self discovery so every moment through all these puzzle of events though it is known yet you have to go through as if not knowing so the puzzle of events which are ultimately leading towards the march of time now this is our big problem because we don't understand this puzzle what it means but at a divine level it is all seen and arranged in this way at that level there is nothing like a, a you know uh, what is fate it's a series of chain of seeing will which has arranged everything all the circumstances so you are actually playing a game which has been fixed but there will be a, then we will actually not be able to play in such a way that we reach that point faster so therefore that foresight is not given and will not be given till we arrive at that point because then we don't need any more you know we have crossed that barrier of ignorance so it's but look at for a moment the in divinely inspired words chance caprice yes mirth puzzle vicissitudes yes he puts it all in five lines all together and these are the things which we experience but there it is mirth yes for the sake of game yes okay let's play the game yes. game of games of chance but you know everything okay i'll put everything behind i'll veil it for a moment <laughs> let's play <laughs> but here there is a deliberate veiling unlike we in ignorance there is a veil thick veil as such ever she framed stark bonds for the will to break <laughs> so uh, you know it summarizes the whole thing brought new creations for the thought surprise and passionate ventures for the heart to dare where truth record with an unexpected face or else repeated old familiar joy like the return of a delightful rhyme so that is where the supermind is poised between the one and the many so it draws from the one and gives it it knows it's not that it doesn't know and chubindu speaks of the three layers of the supermind whereas the highest the imperative supermind not only knows but it is absolutely the same but as we come down there is the apprehending supermind the representating supermind which picks up these real ideas and puts them into representative images he is a great detail he describes it but here it's so beautiful and poetic at hide and seek on a mother wisdom's breast an artist teeming with her world idea she never could exhaust its numberless thoughts and vast adventure into thinking shapes in trial and lure of a new living's dreams and this changes perspective so people in india at some point very afraid of rebirth but if you look at it rebirth from another point of view well each time we get a new way new chance new approach towards the same truth in countless ways and i take it in a little different way that okay if 1000 years for the super mind that means 1000 years we will have the joy of service what is the problem absolutely <laughs> is service of the divine something trivial when super mind is established there is no joy of service <laughs> the joy of service 
see the bhaktas uh, it is said sri ramakrishna himself used to do it and the mother speaks of that that uh, you know if you are one with the divine there is no more joy of love you are one so the bhaktas deliberately put a subtle veil why because they want to enjoy the relation that's why when mother said hanuman and rama are not two different they are one but look at the joy that is created by the one becoming hanuman or nandi and shiva they are one but for the joy of the play there is a subtle difference so you know so many ways of approaching i love when shirobin writes a veil behind the heart and a lid, a lid over the mind love and devotion rend the veil and in the silence of the mind the lid thins and vanishes so beautiful and so she could never exhaust this adventure of living dreams and trial and lure of a new living dreams untired of sameness and untired of change see this is how divine looks at it when mother was asked mother who am i now there are so many answer people give mother gave and mother herself has given different answers but one of her answers is very very fascinating it is one of her experiences also which she recounts in prayers she she gives the answer who mother who am i she answers the divine under many disguises mm. <laughs> Who am I? The divine, under many disguises. Mother, are you God? It is true of all of us. Each one of us are potentially God. Only we do not know it. Okay, it changes the perspective. Yes. It's not like some cruel hand of destiny is you know punishing her, convicted. No, we are all in our depth divine. This is the beauty of you know uh, original Vedantic thought. Is this? only some know it some don't know it those who don't know it suffer those who know it are delighted in the game whatever it brings even the most challenging circumstances well i have chosen this is the great adventure of consciousness and joy endlessly she unrolled her moving act a mystery drama of divine delight a living poem of world ecstasy a kikimono of significant forms a coiled perspective of developing scenes look at this line coiled perspective you see this is this reminds at like this reminded me of this kikimono and you know mm. coiled perspective yes. see of cinema so what is hap- what happens in cinema all the things have been shot and they are in a reel coiled compressed so somebody would ask what is there now of course there are more digital things but uh, i don't know whether now when we had the reels, are, uh, reels. Speaking of the reels so yeah. what is the reel it's a whole life story if somebody would ask what is in it oh the mahabharata mahabharata means 100 years of all the yes it is there a coiled perspective coiled perspective now what is happening it is completely there in that box now it will unfold itself everything is decided the unexpectedness the you know the abandonment the banishment into forest the danger the difficulty the victory the gori war everything but it's already there coiled perspective time compressed and coiled is actually a very scientific uh, <laughs> supreme science <laughs> a brilliant chase of self revealing shapes an ardent hunt of soul looking for soul a seeking and a finding as of gods so this is the original game which everybody played of hide and seek and uh, you know you know that uh, my friend is hiding round the corner he is not gone forever <laughs> so there is a joy in finding and not being able to find for quite some time it's you don't get this idea that oh he is gone forever so there is a hide and seek so its origin is the gods play it <laughs> <laughs> they assume a different form okay search me and then you find it okay you are hiding there and there is a joy of discovery see friends used to play this game and there was such a joy when you found the person hiding there 
but now of course as we grow up we get all these mental ideas and gone and you know all these things come into play that vision is missing there matter is the spirit's firm density an artistry of glad outwardness of self just like vapor condenses into ice so same way matter is the spirit's form density again we see the supramental science how it works so there is no antagonism except that this dense material there is obeying the will but here it becomes so dense that it because why it becomes so dense because of the inconscient coming up and covering it that's the whole uh, play a treasure house of lasting images where sense can build a world of pure delight senses are meant for delight yes but here they bring so much report so much pain suffering and all kind joy thrills fear but sense is in its origin there is a whole chapter in synthesis on the supramental sense and shubhendra describes this in one of his poems the divine sense he says surely now i am no more taking an earthly fruit because all my taste buds have been transmuted so whatever i take it is delight the fruits of ecstasy heavenly paradise those fruits similarly whatever one hears when senses are transmuted it changes into delight now we are in uh, like and dislike zone so like and dislike zone means certain things we don't like certain sounds we don't like certain sights we don't like certain smells we don't like but in that zone everything is delighted changes into delight automatically because this distorting veil is gone this was asked to mother that you know certain smells which we don't like in that zone it automatically changes it's not that you lose discrimination you know it is there but as it enters it changes into delight when there is a supramental sense so it'll solve so many problems all the perfume industry will go out of job the home of a perpetual happiness it lost the hours as in a pleasant inn so he's speaking of home and the inn so all the time one was dwelling in a state of inner joy but as the hours are going in different ways this joy is coming joy of meeting a friend joy of moving away joy of playing a game so like pleasant inn the happy hours the movement through time the senses there were outlets of the soul even the youngest child thought of the mind incarnated some touch of highest things so dilip kumar roy asked one shurvindo that regarding the senses he says that i think i should you know just like the sanyasis crush the senses he says this is no part of a yoga mastery yes change yes sublimation purification but it's no part of our yoga to crush the senses like the sanyasis do to dry up the senses because if you do that then they are no more ready for the transmutation you have to refine them so even he gives this process like for instance the senses seek pleasure refine the pleasure upgrade it upgrade it sublimate it till one day everything becomes a joy their substance was a resonant harp of self a net for the constant lightnings of the spirit a magnet power of love's intensity whose yearning throb and adoration's cry drew god's approaches close sweet wonderful so the substance was not a veil but a harp so like a music many notes in one music melody so that is how this substance was resonating with the touch of the divine and in different ways it it was felt as sweet close wonderful its solidity was a mass of heavenly make so this also it's very interesting when shrivinda was asked about super mind he says it's very difficult to explain it but the super mind is plastic like gas and solid like diamond he says both things at the same time mind so, can't handle can't uh, <laughs> yeah though we are very interestingly trying to reach that substance mm. 
Yes, because you know, like new substance are coming into, and very interesting, they are made of something which is close to diamond, like graphene. Solid, strong. It's very strong, but very resilient and plastic material, very light. So it will be the future substance for you know, um, aircrafts and other. in aircraft you want that, you want something very solid, spacecraft, but you also want it to be light. So actually, very interestingly, space travel itself. Now this is of course outwardly, but ultimately a substance which is solid, at the same time very light. So this is the supramental substance. Its fixity and sweet permanence of charm made a bright pedestal for felicity. Its body is woven by a divine sense. Now how are bodies woven? <laughs> woven. <laughs> This is what is the Upanishadic way of understanding creation. It's not like forms are made and then we behold them. It is our beholding that builds the forms. Actually, it's very interesting because our senses limit. Out of infinite, um, let's say, vibrations, it selects. And it selects this much light, this much, literally on as on the computer, the brightness and everything. And eventually, because we do it habitually, we don't realize it. And it's only that in certain disordered conditions of the brain that this problem comes. That, oh, senses were weaving reality. See how people who take LSD, I mean, uh, it's not a good thing, but uh, there is a book by Aldo Huxley, mm. Doors of Perception, Heaven and Hell. Right. So at a certain point of time, people started experimenting. Why? Because it made them escape from the trap of material world which is woven by the senses in a certain way so when you take these drugs suddenly you experience light as sound <laughs> and you they, op they open doors they open doors of perception which are not possible yes so they actually describe it that well i can't say but you know light was singing and it's actual real experience so, people often say these are hallucinations, but it reorganizes the senses. Actually, senses weave reality, but it's habitual. Every day, because the human caste is like that. But another kind of senses will organize reality in a very different way. Well, animals, they experience reality through infrared images, which are very different from the way we human beings experience. So the supramental reality is very different and Sri was asked and he said that, that I see Mani Lal, at the same time we see Brahman, he sees the past, he sees the future, he sees everything around. It's a different uh, vision altogether. So all the senses there work in unison. Here the brain integrates them, uh, it receives from different places, there are different centers of the brain where they are processed ultra fast and then we have an image. But actually, it is not the real thing. The real thing we never know because the brain is not developed to organize all this material. So it's a workable, working thing. Yes. So, so its body is woven by a divine sense. Prolong the nearness of soul's clasp with soul. Its warm play of external sight and touch reflected the glow and thrill of the heart's joy. Minds climbing brilliant thoughts, the spirit's bliss, life's rapture, kept forever its flame and cry. Here the senses find and they lose. So when one sense loses, you try to compensate with another sense. Somebody whom you loved, you cannot see, so you want to talk through the other sense. Or you hear the voice. Or sometimes people say, oh, this perfume, he liked it very much. So you reconnect with that reality in this way. But that was not needed here. So that, But that is in the original supramental world. But that is how it will be when matter completely becomes plastic to the supramental substance. So this is what Sri is working towards. All that now passes lived immortal there. So there was no disappearance. Right now, things pass away because the senses are limited. In the proud beauty and fine harmony of matter, 
plastic to spiritual light and it is moving in that direction even modern science so people who you know talk about doomsday and hopeless they actually are not looking at so many things that are happening so there is a whole experiment which is going on and with fair amount of success that maybe with light we can open up the blocked arteries you don't need those catheters already people have discovered with sound you can do it but these are extremely expensive and we don't yet have the tools but in principle it is there that light can actually smoothen the flow through the arteries and remove the blocks but that intensity of light the arteries cannot bear that is the problem but surely once we know the principle we'll find a way to figure it out but look at it that matter is plastic to spiritual light this matter is not this is the difficulty otherwise lasik surgery is that it's a recognition laser mm. surgery that by light you can actually cut penetrate and do what is to be done you are compelling matter by these means to become plastic because it's not just a question of one surgery it's suddenly in matter's world of matter there is a change probably beings of that matter matter <laughs> are discussing oh there is a new possibility let's it's opening doors because once you achieve it in one human being in a few human beings in a certain way it will tend to spread so this is what is in the ways of the divine it's ordered ours proclaim the eternal law so the entire unfolding was the law of truth vision reposed on a safety of deathless forms time was eternity's transparent robe an architect yoing out self's living rock phenomenon built realities some a house on the beaches of the sea of infinity the first forms are emerging what they would be on the beaches of the sea of infinity so this is a wonderful place to go the beach of the sea of infinity <laughs> and witness the emergence of these forms and then come back and let it happen here thank you alok